Viewer discretion advised. Jonathan Luna, 38, was a husband and a father of two children and an assistant U.S. attorney for Baltimore, Maryland. On December 3rd, 2003, he was prosecuting a drug case and stayed late at his office to prepare a plea deal due to the judge in the morning. Jonathan left a message for Archangelo Tuminelli, one of the lawyers for the defense. Mr. Tuminelli said this about the voicemail, quote, he told me that he had worked on the plea in his office and had to go home. He said once he got home, he would work on the agreement so that it was ready in the morning. I think he said he would return to the office, end quote. 11.38 p.m. Jonathan suddenly left the Baltimore courthouse, leaving his eyeglasses needed to drive and cell phone on his desk, and drove northeast on I-95 using his easy pass. He went to Delaware. 12.57 a.m. $200 was withdrawn out of Jonathan's account from the ATM at the JFK Service Center near Newark, Delaware. 2.47 a.m. Jonathan crossed the Delaware River Toll Bridge, entering the Pennsylvania Turnpike. 3.20 a.m. Jonathan's credit card is used to purchase gas at the Seneca King of Prussia Service Plaza. 4.04 a.m. His car exited the Turnpike at the Reading Lancaster Interchange. The toll ticket received was later found with a spot of blood on it. 5 a.m. The first employee arrives at the Sensing and Weaver Well Drilling Company in Denver, Pennsylvania. 5.30 a.m. An employee at the drilling company noticed Jonathan's car on the property, its front end in the stream, hanging off the property with its headlights turned off. Blood covered the front left fender and the driver's side door. A large puddle of blood was found on the rear seat floorboards. Jonathan was found in the stream, face down, underneath the car engine, still wearing his black suit and overcoat, and his court ID was still around his neck. He'd been stabbed 36 times, mostly in the back, suffered a head injury, and his scrotum and throat were slashed. Witnesses said his hands were shredded from defensive wounds. Lancaster County Coroner, in 2003 it was Dr. Barry Welp, ruled the cause of death was drowning and classified the case as a homicide. Six weeks after his death, authorities concluded Jonathan was stabbed with the pen that hung around his neck with his court identification badge. Friends and co-workers admitted to problems in Jonathan's life at work. His job was in trouble and Jonathan was thinking about opening up his own practice after his boss, the U.S. Attorney for the State of Maryland, Thomas DiBaggio, gave him a terrible performance review threatening to fire him. Then, $36,000 went missing and Jonathan became the prime suspect. However, many co-workers admitted that the money was left open where anyone could steal it. Unfortunately, it didn't help his deteriorating relationship with U.S. Attorney DiBaggio. The FBI couldn't find a motive or a suspect and determined that Jonathan was alone during his excursion and felt his death was a suicide. Despite their attempts to change the cause of death to a suicide, the Lancaster County Coroner stands by their ruling. Jonathan Luna's death was a homicide. The FBI has closed the case and made it clear only new evidence will reopen it. In Pennsylvania, the case remains open. The debate between Jonathan committing suicide or being horribly murdered rages on. Make sure you place your theory in the comments. William Kessling, the author of The Midnight Ride of Jonathan Luna said, quote, Here we are, and it's just really sad. If you or I disappeared from our office, if this was some insurance salesman, there'd be more thorough investigation. This guy was a drug prosecutor from Baltimore, for God's sakes. It's like something out of Breaking Bad, end quote. If you have information about the bizarre death of Jonathan Luna, contact local authorities or the Pennsylvania Crime Stoppers at 1-800-4-PA-TIPS. There is a $100,000 reward for information on this case, though I find it strange for the FBI to offer such a large reward for a case they consider a suicide and closed for Jonathan. Sources for this case are in the description. No copyright infringement intended. Thanks for watching.
If there's a case you'd like to see me feature on Mondays or Murder, send the name of the case to marygirlmoody at gmail.com. If you like the video, please give it a like. New videos every Monday? Subscribe.